Hello and welcome to Frank's School. I have uh, two subjects I want to deal with today. Uh, this first one, I, I just want to revisit, we gather together, uh, uh, briefly, okay? The verse form. When I was listening to my own presentation, I realized that actually there's a regularity to that uh, internal rhyme, which I hadn't realized. The first and second beat, we gather, we, we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing, He hastens and chastens. But then the third line, the wick, the wick, the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing is two and four, and that's the same in all three stanzas. And then in the fourth line, the rhyme is only end rhyme. I'm fairly sure. And one other thing I wanted to say was, if you pronounce praised, uh, thy name be praised, O Lord, make us free. Thy name be ever praised, O. Lord. Uh, if you pronounce it praised the old-fashioned way, then it's smooth. You, uh, you, you have the right number of syllables. And I suspect that was maybe intended. All right, another thing. This, this business about numbers, uh, the, the importance of number three. I believe there's a very cute song out there about how the number two is better than the number one. Uh, I, f I found one. Is it Taylor Swift? Th that wasn't it. Uh, I... I'm quite sure that there's a really cute song about that subject, but it escapes me. I just can only tell you it's out there. If anybody out there finds it, let me know. Maybe I'll think of it. But I did want to say um, about uh, Lippenschweigen, uh, I was saying there's an example of a waltz. The Merry Widow's Waltz is what it's translated as. Well, I highly recommend on YouTube that you go here, up uh, there, uh, Evelyn, if you just type in uh, Lippenschweigen and, and Eva, that will be enough, and, and you'll find it. Uh, Evelyn is a soprano, Johannes Kalpers is, is a tenor, and they're singing this together. There's two versions on there. They're about the same. I would go with the longer one, I think. Sadly, they're not quite uh, synchronous. The, the, I think that's the right word. The, the, the sound is not quite perfect with the video, but you can get past that. The fact that they're singing in German, maybe that's good if you don't understand German, because you can spend more time looking at it and listening to the music and not maybe thinking about what the words are. Uh, as I've said elsewhere in this course, she is my all-time favorite soprano. Dazzling, her voice. Uh, and, uh, and uh, I think you can hear it in that song. Um, uh, Johannes Kalpers, I don't know too much about him, but I did want to say this, that, uh, that uh, you, you, all my life I've heard about Irish tenors, they're famous Irish tenors, and, and of course the Italian tenors from opera. I've begun to suspect that German tenors are the ones I like, because I love his voice too. And, and uh, there are some other tenors that Eva Lindt has sung with before that, Boy, well, I, I, I like it. And another thing, it occurs to me to tell you, that one of the things I like about this singing is it's so straightforward, and it's so... I mean, she, well, both of them, I assume, can do anything that opera requires. Trills, cadenzas, all that stuff. But this is just straight-out singing, and it is uh, my preference. Um, uh, oh, I guess finally, uh, uh, Lip, Lippenschweigen, uh, the Merry Widow's Waltz, is, is a slow waltz. And yet, I still think, when you see the two of them waltzing together, you can, you can feel how, I don't know, passionate a waltz can be. All right, uh, well, there we go. This is kind of a footnote to yesterday. I do have a second video today.